We're going to take a look at being able to find the derivatives of logarithmic functions. So one of the things you probably might remember from pre-calculus is that logarithmic functions have a slew of different um, properties to them. And before we actually get to the derivatives, I want to go through and talk about some of, just remind you of some of those properties. So you probably remember that if you have log base or just log of m times n, that's the same thing as log of m plus log of n. Right, so sorry about this, let me erase this. So this becomes log of m plus log of n. And in the same capacity, if you have m divided by n, well, instead of plus becomes a minus. So you have log m minus log n. Another property you might remember is r log of x. What you can do is you can make that r as an exponent. And so you can write that as log x to the r power. Now, the derivative, and these are all things from pre-calculus. Um, the derivative, if we take the derivative of ln x, that's just equal to 1 over x. And of course, we might have a chain rule. We might have product rule, quotient rules to be able to throw in there too. All right, so let's go ahead and start going through and doing some of the derivatives of these logarithmic types of functions. So let's start off with a really basic one. We just have the natural log of the square root of x squared plus seven. And this looks like a really tricky problem, but it's actually not too bad because one of the things you might remember is that square root is the same thing as the one half power. So you can rewrite this as ln of x squared plus seven to the one half power. And now what you can do is you can just go ahead and take the derivative using the chain rule. So we have it inside of here, we have an x squared plus seven. We're gonna move the one half as a coefficient by using one of those algebra rules for logs. So one half ln of x squared plus seven. And now we can find the derivative, all right? So if y is equal to this, then dy dx is gonna be equal to one half times, now the derivative is gonna be one over whatever's inside the parentheses, x squared plus seven. But then we're going to multiply by the derivative of what's inside of there. So I'm just going to say x squared plus 7 prime as our chain rule. And so finally, when we get to our final answer, we can just kind of put this, we know that this is going to become 2x. And we have a 2 in the denominator and a 2 right here. So the final derivative for this is going to be equal to just x over x squared plus seven. All right. So it's pretty easy for us to be able to use these law rules. Another example. So we have six ln of eight x. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and take the derivative right away. We know the derivative of ln, so I'm just gonna call this dy dx. Derivative of ln is one over whatever's inside, so the six is a coefficient, so we're gonna get one over eight x. But then we're also gonna multiply by our chain rule the derivative of what's inside of there. So that's gonna be eight x prime. Now we know the derivative of eight x is going to be just eight. And so this actually works out really nicely that the eights are gonna cancel with each other out. And what we're just left with is we're just left with 6 over x. So really nice and easy for our derivative for this. All right. Now, we can go ahead and we can use our product rule. So we have our f equals 4x to the fifth ln x. So we're going to define our little f in the product rule. And remember, product rule is f prime g plus f g prime. That's going to be 4x to the fifth for f, and then little g is going to be just ln of x. Derivative of 4x to the fifth, 20x to the fourth. Derivative of ln x, 1 over x. And so two ways that we can write our answer for f prime of x. So we just take f prime multiplied by g, f multiplied by g prime. So that's going to be 20x to the fourth ln x plus 4x to the fifth times 1 over x. And notice that this can be simplified because we have 
five x's and one x. So five x in the numerator, one x in the denominator. So another way to write this would be 20x to the fourth ln x plus 4x to the fourth. And then finally, if we really wanted to factor this, we could. We could factor out a 4 and an x to the fourth. So factoring out 4x to the fourth, that would leave us with 5 ln of x plus 1. Right? So a lot of these answers are just the same. Just make sure that you, um, whatever my math lab asks for, that's what you've been putting into it. All right, one last example before we go through and, and try some other harder examples. This is one that looks initially really tough because if we were to just take the derivative without using any log rules, this would become a chain rule problem, but then a quotient rule without the, with that chain going on in there. But remember we have that law that if you have any log of x over y, that's equal to log of x minus log of y. And so let's do that first. Let's just change this. We're not taking any calculus rules here. We're just using the log rules. This is going to be ln of x plus 2 minus ln of x minus 2. And that's a lot easier to deal with. Now we know the derivative of ln is 1 over what's inside parentheses, so that's 1 over x plus 2, so now we are finding a derivative. However, we have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside of there, by chain rule. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the second term here. So derivative of negative ln x over 2 is negative 1 over x minus 2. And then again, by our chain rule, we're going to multiply by whatever's inside. And we know the derivative of x plus 2 is just 1. We know the derivative of x minus 2 is just 1. So that makes it really easy because, in actuality, we just multiply 1 times 1 to get 1. Right? So for our final answer for this, 1 times 1 is going to be 1 over x plus 2, um, and then minus 1 over x minus 2. And we can leave it like that. I think that's perfectly fine. Um, if we needed to get a common denominator and add those together, then we could certainly do that as well, right? But we'll just leave it like this. Um, in fact, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and add them together. It never hurts to see some of the algebra necessary to do that. So let me get rid of this just to have some room here. Um, if I wanted to get a common denominator, the common denominator would be x plus 2, x minus 2. Right? So I'm going to rewrite both of these with a common denominator of x plus 2, x minus 2. And to go from here to here, notice that we have to multiply the top by x minus 2. And then to go from here to here, we have to multiply by x plus 2. Notice we have an x minus x, so they cancel each other out. And then we have 2 minus 2, which is going to be a negative 4. So another answer would be negative 4 over x plus 2, x minus 2. Right? I just wanted to write that out just in case my math lab wants you to write it as a single sort of fraction. And sometimes it is easier to deal with one fraction than two fractions. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at a few more difficult versions or a few more difficult examples of these logarithms and their derivatives.